Dear students, you all must have been to a shopping mall or a grocery store near your house. Have you observed how the items are stored in the shelves or counters? Is there a particular pattern in which they are kept? Items are stored according to the nature of their use in a store. In your house, your mother often asks you to keep your books, clothes and other things in order. You must be arranging them so that you can retrieve them easily when you require them. Go to your school library. Observe how the books are arranged. Books are classified on the basis of their contents in a library. You have seen how helpful classification is in everyday life. Similarly, classification was adopted by scientists for matter. You all know that matter can exist in the form of elements, compounds and mixtures. When elements were discovered, scientists adopted different ways to classify elements. Properties or atomic mass of elements were considered for classifying elements. In earlier days, very few elements were known. At that time, they were classified as metals and non-metals on the basis of their properties. Some elements showed properties of both metals and non-metals and they could not be placed in any of the two classes. For example, silicon and boron. To overcome these difficulties, scientists tried to find out some pattern or regularity in properties of elements. Let us see what is meant by Doberreiner's triads. Johann Wolfgang Doberreiner, a German scientist from 1780 to 1849, studied as a pharmacist at Munchberg in Germany and then studied chemistry at Strasbourg. In 1829, he found some groups of three elements which show similar properties. These groups were called as triads. In these triads, atomic mass of middle element was approximately the mean of the atomic masses of the other two elements. For example, sum of atomic masses of lithium and potassium is 46. Mean of their masses is 23. You can see from the table that mass of sodium is 23. The table shows four triads arranged vertically. We will now verify the atomic masses of strontium, bromine and selenium from the other triads. For this, we find the mean of the extreme two elements. To find atomic mass of strontium, we add masses of calcium and barium and divide the sum by two. You can see that the mass got is approximately same as shown in table. Similarly, we can verify atomic masses of bromine and selenium. The triads were known as Doberreiner's triads. There were some drawbacks of Doberreiner's triads. Let us look at them. Doberreiner could identify only some triads from the elements known. Other triads did not obey Doberreiner's rule. Hence, the system of triads was not useful. Now, let us study about Newlands octaves. An English chemist, Newlands, attempted to classify elements. By this time, 56 elements were discovered. Newlands arranged all these elements in increasing order of their atomic masses. He found that every eighth element had properties similar to that of the first. For example, properties of hydrogen are similar to fluorine. He compared this to the octaves found in music. Therefore, his classification was known as Newlands octaves. 
Newland's law states that when the elements are arranged in increasing order of their atomic masses, the properties of the eighth element are similar to the first. Let us look at the features of Newland's table. Newland could arrange elements only up to calcium out of total 56 elements known. After calcium, every eighth element did not possess properties similar to that of the first. Newlands thought only 56 elements existed, but later several elements were discovered. In order to fit the existing elements, Newlands adjusted two elements in the same position which differed in their properties. This periodic table did not include inert or noble gases because they were not discovered. Activity Let us try to identify Dober-Reiner's triads in Newland's table. Yes, we can see lithium, sodium and potassium in second column which constitute a triad. 